Good morning, Miss Booz Allen. How are you today? I am fine. I'm okay. Awesome. Thank you so much for um, allowing us to do this interview with you. As mm -hmm. you know, this month is Autism Awareness Month and we want to shine light on the parents who have a child on the autism spectrum. Okay. So firstly, what, mm -hmm. um, what are some of the things that you noticed with your child that prompted you to have them screen? All right. Um, Adrian was going to a preschool, mm -hmm. right? And in any preschool, we observed that he was um lashing out. Mm -hmm. He was very lashing out. He wasn't um he wasn't talking. When you tried to um other children tried to mix with other children, he would lash out and hit out and you know, mm -hmm. no matter we tried it also we would try to toilet train him and he also wasn't taken to that too well. Right? Mm -hmm. Um his Godmother from the states came down, and she recognized it off the bat. Mm -hmm. She said he has autism. I said, well, I said, well, nobody told me that. She said, no, go and check it. So at the same time, we were going to the developmental clinic in um a women health facility. Mm -hmm. Right, it took a long time to get an appointment, but I think um what happened? So I managed to get a quick appointment. That day I went to my uniform, and they realized I was a staff, so they gave me a quick appointment. Right? Because mm -hmm. it was still not to be at least two months after, but still was a quick appointment. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, when, we, when we spoke to the doctor that was in charge, I can't remember her name, but she was in charge and she took um, a list. And with the next study, she did, she checked him and she said, yes, he really has autism. Um, I'm not lying. I, um, I work in St. Anne's Hospital. Mm -hmm. Right, so when normally when you see autism in Santa, there's the severe ones. Mm -hmm. So I am not lying, I started to cry because this is how I picked my child that he couldn't talk, that he would never speak, mm -hmm. he would always be getting on. And um, I, I'm not lying, I started to cry, I really started to cry because I had no um idea how to handle it. Yeah, right, I was devastated at the city least. I had no idea how to handle it. Um, I think through the developmental center, they sent me to the autistic society, which is in um Wagu Road in Aruka. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, um, I came in and I met with a lady called Amoy, and they were all say people talk about Amoy. She's a very loving woman. Right, very mm -hmm. friendly, very loving, very thoughtful woman. She was one of the ladies there, right? Her son was recently, I think, was um in an interview with um Newsday about being a autistic person with doing university. Mm -hmm. I think it was just recently, right? That is her son. Right. He's also autistic, right? Um. I went to Karima, and when I carried him, I think Adrian was around three, four years old. Right? Mm -hmm. Started doing therapy with him. He used to bite. He used to bite you. Oh, no. Yes, he used to bite you, and he used to scream at the top of his voice. Right? Now, the screaming was the first thing I got rid of, because looking sentence and hearing screams, coming out to hear screams is not easy. I can imagine. So that was the first thing I looked outside of thing to get rid of. You can't couldn't take the screen when I come home. Mm -hmm. Right? Um the biting, he used to bite. When he's frustrated, he used to bite. Mm -hmm. Right? Because he wasn't talking. Remember, he wasn't talking. He had no way to communicate out there. Eh? Right? Mm -hmm. Um one day he bit he have a he have an older brother named Charles. Right? That's my mm -hmm. only other child. My older brother of Charles. And he went and he bit Charles. Mm -hmm. Right? And Charles bit him back. <laughs> and after that, he never bite again. Right? Mm -hmm. But we, as I said, he went to the autistic society and they did IEP sessions with him, music sessions with him. 
different sessions with him, mm -hmm. right? He was, I think, one of the poster children, right? If you look back at Republic Bank uh, make a start, mm -hmm. you will see him in, in the advertisements. He's a child in the red and white outfit doing the cooking. Okay. With the shirt on. He was in advertisements with the right with the Republic Bank and the Autistic Society, mm -hmm. right? Um, he was there. The teacher in the preschool he was going to, which was up on this, my side, when she found out he was autistic, mm -hmm. she was very much interested in principal because she never dealt with an autistic child yet. Mm -hmm. Right? So she was very much interested. In fact, she, she and the teacher came to sessions in the school with Adrian. Mm -hmm. the because they were interested in how to a case in Futena. Mm -hmm. Dealing with any other child, they would know what to do, how to do, how to do about it. Adrian came from behind, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the end of school test in the preschool mm -hmm. and came up. I think, I think it's first or second. No, he just said that did used to talk, mm -hmm. right? He was still wasn't talking, but he was still, I guess we were getting him to say little words one and on. And that too would also be because I was working nights where I was working. Mm -hmm. so in, I had to leave home every morning, no, sorry, every night and carry Adrian to Gonzalez, his sitter, mm -hmm. and then go to work. So what we used to do is that when I'm going on, I used to have a, you know, most autistic children learn by visual. Mm -hmm. So I took a DVD, I put it in the cast, I put it in the car somewhere. And while I'm going down and coming up in the mornings, I played for him. Mm. Right? So that whole hour is learning ABC, colors, shapes, numbers. Right? And as I said, you go from come from behind to come out in a second, a second nothing in any in, in preschool when he was leaving. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. Because that, they realized that he knew his thing most of the time. Right? But he still wasn't talking that much. Eh? Mm -hmm. He still wasn't talking that much. Um, when we were leaving, he was getting ready to school. I was wondering which school to put him in. Mm -hmm. Because you wasn't here in much schools, especially up on my side, where you could put him in. Mm -hmm. And um, um, a lady suggested a motel. Which is a special need, a totally special needs school mm -hmm. in St. Anne's, which is not too far from where I'm working, so I'm to for him to go to school. Mm -hmm. Right. Meanwhile, while it's all this is going on, I am still I am trying to get a grant, the grant for him mm -hmm. to do for him, at least to pay for him to do speech therapy. The speech therapy is very expensive down here. At the time when I, he was doing it, it was two fifty a half an hour. Oh, wow. a half an hour, right? No, I'm a single parent. His father doesn't contribute nothing towards it. And he, the older child is working, and they already take for anything from him. He works on and off, mm -hmm. right? So basically, the agent has to rely on me. Um, for two years, I have chased, I chased the social welfare mm -hmm. to get a grant for Adrian. And I want, and, and that's why I remember one time pulling aside on the Valencia stretch crying because they didn't understand what autism was. Yeah. They had no idea. They thought it was severe and they didn't know such thing as the doctor diagnosed him with mild to moderate. Mm -hmm. Right? They didn't understand what it is. They couldn't see when they come, when they watch him, they couldn't see him. So they didn't recognize him being autistic. They just finally looked like a normal child for whatever. Mm -hmm. No, it would have certain quirks. He had then and he still have now. Right? Mm -hmm. So the question how he how he um copes with it. Right? Mm -hmm. One of his quirks is that when he is bored or he's frustrated or he's fed up with something, he will literally, literally bounce off the wall. Okay. Right? He would bounce, just touch the wall, go back and next side, touch. And when it is, he calms himself down. Because that's the real, he's calming himself down. When he mm -hmm. calms himself down, he goes back to what he's doing. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Now back to immortal. Immortal, when we took him, he, he came into immortal at the age of five years. Mm-hmm. Right? He was not potty trained. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So they worked with me. They have their special needs school in centers. They deal with many different kind of special needs. Mm-hmm. Right? And their teachers are very good. Not like they're very good at very patient. Right? Mm-hmm. Um they showed me how to work with him. With it. Right? Mm-hmm. Eventually, eventually I came and I got the grant to do the, the speech shaping. It took me two years to be constantly behind him, but I eventually got it. Mm-hmm. Right? I carried her him to a lady named I can't remember her surname, but Daniela. Mm-hmm. Daniela Danny. I think that Daniela. I can she had a special private pri- private practice somewhere it was in Woodbrook. Mm-hmm. And I used to carry when he finished school. I used to come to that to that therapy in the evening. And then bring him back by the babysitter before going to work in the So which I even right? Yeah. Which means um, I would like I would I was working Sunday to Wednesday night. So when I leave home Sunday evening, mm-hmm. I would not see back my house until Thursday morning. Wow. Which means I am sleeping in the car during the day. Way outside his school. Right? Right. I'm sleeping in the car because when I drop him, it makes no sense coming back home. Because time I reach back home, I have to come back out. It yeah. makes no sense wasting gas that way. So I end up sleeping in the car outside his school for weeks of months on end. Wow. Right? And I got, and now the, the nice thing about it is that while I'm going through all of this, right, I have some colleagues who are working, I have to thank for the patients dealing with me. Mm-hmm. One is my matron, because my matron didn't know much about it, and she was willing to help me when it comes to shift wise mm-hmm. to deal with it. Right? And a lot of colleagues did help, did pull up, help, help me during that time. Because I, I'm not lying, I already was at loss. I didn't know what to do. I was crying myself because at one time he wasn't talking. Mm-hmm. And I remember crying to one of my colleagues at night when I was looking at you. I said, Will he ever say, I love you? Will he ever say, Mommy? Will he ever talk to me? And they tell me, Yeah, sure he will. Sure he will. And I'm just like, I cannot see that happening. I cannot see that happening because he's not talking now. He's singing this and he's doing this and this. And they tell me that we have patience. Even our boy told me that. He said he would talk. And mm-hmm. then he would talk his head off. She does know her. Talk yeah. his head by his head off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I rather he talk my head off than he was talking. <laughs> right? But um my 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 matron helped me a lot because I tell you she gave me when I went to her to explain the problem. I got um certain shifts in order to help accommodate what I had to do with him. Mm-hmm. It was hard, but uh, I got the shifts, right? And they knew, they, my work colleagues, work colleagues knew I was sleeping in the car outside the entrance of school. Right? I would come in, I would come in and work in the night, I would be sure work early in the night because after I dropped the set off, she used to tell me to drop him off by 7 o'clock. So when I drop him off at 7 o'clock, I had to take up work at 9 o'clock, so I would have some time to myself. Mm-hmm. But I would end up going to work early, right? And so that when I reach into work, I do what I have to do, and then my co workers could get sometimes get to leave early. Right? And they think that in the morning, when the morning comes, I get to leave early so I can go and pick him up before the traffic comes out of syntax. So they talk about traffic coming out of syntax at a certain time in the morning. Try to pick him up before the traffic to, cry, to, to leave work in time to go by the babysitter and observer, or going back by the babysitter in the morning. Hmm. He bathes, let him and get him in uniform. Right? Mm-hmm. I take my six that I cry to the school, which is like, as I tell you, not far from where I work in. So I'm crying back in St. Anne's to the school for half past seven, eight o'clock in the morning. Right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes they, they had to provide things for him to eat. Sometimes I have I provide depending. And when I, he goes into the school from eight o'clock in the morning to two o'clock in the evening, I am sleeping in that car outside. Outside the school. Wow. Right? 
Mm-hmm. When I when I collected my three o'clock, two three o'clock in the evening, I will carry it with the park. If we don't have, if we don't have therapy, we'll go to the park, we'll let them run about, let them play, whatever. You know, spend some mm-hmm. time with him, whatever. And then I'd work some of the six I'll climb so the way he gets a bed change wherever eat. You know? Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm going. 